plaintiff, Heather Drayfold, dated the defendant. But after she got pregnant with their child, they started drifting apart and ultimately broke up. Heather is suing her ex for unpaid child support. Defendant Jordan Fitzpatrick says after Heather got pregnant, she wanted to get married and he wanted to take things slowly. And that's what led to their demise. All rise. This court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Greg Mathis presiding. You may now be seated. Start with you. Um, I first met Jorn when I worked at my old job at the gas station. Um, he was one of my customers. When was he came that? came in um, 2018. Okay. Um, he came in and the first thing he said to me was he liked my nails, which trying to be Mr. Smooth. Um, and he came in, I think it was a couple more times. And he asked me if I had a Facebook. I said, yes. He asked me if I had a boyfriend and I said, no, I did not. So he then proceeded to ask me to dinner. So I accepted. You all did all this at the gas station. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. I was the guy behind him buying coffee. Yeah. I waiting. See. Yeah, that might not be a bad place for single men to go. <laughs> yeah. All right. Go. go ahead. So you all went out how long after? Um, I would say a couple weeks after you started coming in. Okay. We went out to dinner. Um, had a really great time. After that, it was like, great. We spent every day together. And I'd say everything was perfect. Mm -hmm. um, found out I was pregnant in July 2019. How long had you all son. been dating? Um, about a year. Okay. And was it planned? No, no, Your Honor, it was not. All right. <laughs> Didn't do nothing to prevent it, but wasn't planned. All right, let me hear from him a little bit. Go ahead, sir. What do you yeah, want to tell? Uh, Give me some background. It wasn't planned. No, we did, didn't do nothing to prevent it. That's for sure. Right. You tell me. Give me your description of how things started. Sometimes men have a different uh, perception of what occurred. You might think she chose yeah. you, but you were doing the begging from what I've heard so far. <laughs> but go ahead. Let me hear from you. Uh, yeah, I used to go to a different gas station, actually. I used to get a lot of Monsters energy drinks, you know, on cigarettes. And uh, the gas station I normally went to, they were actually out of my Newport. So I went to the next closest gas station, which was her gas station. Didn't used to go there. And I'm like, oh, man, she looks good, you know. I got to say something. So I noticed her nails. They were really nice. So I said something about her nails. And uh, I left. And I, I think I started going back there every day, every day for monsters and cigarettes. You know, slowly started talking to her and slowly stayed. She longer. came every day? Oh, she worked there. She worked there. Yeah. Well, she worked three days and I would go every time she worked. Okay. Stay there and talk to her. All right. So it went well after you all met and had dinner? Yeah. And obviously it yeah. went well enough for you all to have a child together one year later? Yes. All right. Yeah. And she's suing you for child support. That's why this wasn't planned, because now you're poor. All right, let me hear from you. Tell me about the relationship since that time. When the child was born, how have things been since? Uh, well, shortly after I got pregnant, I brought up marriage. And he was not on the same page with it. So through the pregnancy, he was there for me and everything, but we kind of started drifting apart um, and ended up splitting. Um, he has helped with our son, like emotionally and everything. He is there, he does visit mm. with him, but mm. your honor, that doesn't pay formula that doesn't pay diapers. So right. I need some financial help. <laughs> All right. And has he ever resisted paying? In other words, is it related to his income or is there some other reason he might not be paying? 
Um, well, shortly after our son was born, due to COVID and everything, he lost his job. Um, so he has had hardship and everything. Which was I he do paying understand. up until then? Um, no, because we didn't have our son yet. He lost his job right when we had our son. Oh, sorry to hear that. That's horrible. Right when the child arrived around that time frame, huh? Yep. And so it doesn't Actually, do you any good. Well, of course, you should go and register with the child services um, and they'll apportion child support that he would have to pay when he does get employed. And that would be a back pay uh, because they still assess child support when you're not working. They it may be very small amounts, uh, but then um, once you start working, you can get it modified. How did you come to 2800? Um, verbally, we had agreed in January that he would pay 400 a month okay. for our son. Um, we do have other stuff in the works um, as far as the court system and everything. You do have it in the works? Yes. All right. You should have yes, waited for I that. You should have waited. Papers and stuff. Not that you want to reduce it or pay any less, sir, but 400 is a nice little piece. What do you say, sir, about this? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, things went well in the beginning uh, and she wanted to get married and uh, I'm more of a, a conservative when it comes to stuff like that. You know, I like to take things slow and make sure it's good. You don't have day. nothing to conserve. You can't pay yeah. this 2800 Zero. You're talking about you conserve. To conserve what? What do you conserve? You don't uh, have nothing. <laughs> I wasn't Does he have anything money. to conserve? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I know what you mean. So you're a little like more I, conservative I about money. That's why I was able to offer that 400 yeah. You do but, make uh, a decent living? Oh, yeah, I was making good living. Good. I'm a CNC machinist, so oh, good. I make pretty good money. Good. Uh, the reason for... Not marrying, I threw you off. You said you are more conservative than her. I suppose you were referring to getting married at this point, or what were you referring to? Yeah, because uh, it was marriage, because she doesn't take into like the consideration, I don't think, of financial implications. She thinks of the happily ever after. <laughs> Uh, when I was 16 years old. She's not alone. Charged. Go ahead. <laughs> when you were 16? Yeah, I got charged for having sex with a 15-year-old who was my girlfriend. And uh, in Wisconsin, the law is 16 is 80 percent. And I got, I got booked. I mean, I got 10 years of probation. Uh, and I ran through, a, or I was out past my curfew. And I got five years in prison for it. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's you were over sentence. Yeah. Yeah, and then uh, I got out. I was out for uh, two and a half weeks after five years, and I ran through a stop sign, and I only got a verbal warning, and I didn't report it to my police officer, my probation agent. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, when she asked me if I had police contact, I said no because it was the same one that had just thrown me in for five years. And she threw me back in for five more years. Mm, five more, a total of 10. I watched your show a lot. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I did a lot of time, but I racked a lot of child support in there. Yeah. I racked a lot of child support because they didn't cut it off. So when you get married, uh, from my best understanding is that you're, when you file taxes, her taxes could have get intercepted as well for my child support and I know there's ways you can file separately and do things different but I don't think that's something that she understood or knew about because it was so close and that's why I say I'm more conservative because uh, I want to do things slowly right. because anytime I do things quick it doesn't turn out and when you do things slow you know you build so what was with the baby what was it, two minutes <laughs> He wishes that was smooth. <laughs> you say, you say you with, 40 with you, every time you do something fast, you get a result different than you expected. That was a good one, yeah. 
<laughs> All right. Well, I think you're a very practical guy. That sounds like what you're saying as much as conservative, practical. Uh, and let me just make an observation about the justice system. That's why so many people have a problem because they don't have common sense. Yeah. You know, judges and some prosecutors, Books. they don't have common sense. Yeah. I mean, yes, that's against the law. In my opinion, there's some, I don't know about that law where it's two consenting minors. Both of you were minors and it was consenting. I know if one is an adult and the other one is a minor, that should be certainly oh, yeah. statutory rape. But in this case, and then you end up getting 10 years, man, the justice system is just horrible in some instances. And I'll be the first to say it as a judge. And hopefully that's why you and your buddies watched me because you all knew I'm a fair judge when you guys were in prison. And then you know I've been in jail too, so that didn't hurt. <laughs> you can see the game going down in real time. Uh -huh. All right, <laughs> so, or the game, kick, kicking the game in real time, put it that way. I can't put the game down no more because I ain't in the street. But I can still, <laughs> still kick it. Right. I guess the one good thing I can say that I got lucky with, I, I can't even say I got lucky with it, but I'm glad that didn't fall back on me is I don't have to register. Oh, Clearly, good. I'm not, I'm good. not a menace to society. I'm definitely not a pedophile. Good. It's something that disgusts me. So having that, even seeing that case on my record is, it like yeah. eats at me because that's now that's can't you get that expunged you've only had one hopefully conviction yeah i mean i've had other convictions for other crimes can't get it expunged then no mm -hmm. i have had a gun case uh bail jumping i stole a car so i took a plea deal essentially which was stupid i had a pretty bad lawyer because yeah. if i would have just fought everything and I would have probably got that one case dropped. Mm. I would have got less time by getting guilty to everything else. And Hold it. One the other case you got, was it part of that one incident? Okay. No. I was going to say, if it was part of one incident, regardless of how many cases they throw on you, if it's part of that same incident, it's still only considered that one felony in terms of the expungement laws. All right, so the 2,800, um, you believe that's uh, the amount? Yeah, that's what I agreed to, Your Honor. I mean, I was making a good living and I didn't, nobody knew COVID was gonna come, you know? And I told her- And I did. would you say that, and I suggest you do, would you say that this money is for uh, child care services? Because you do care for the child. And so could we consider that he's paying you for child care services? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Thank I, you. I because <laughs> because I I couldn't enforce a strict child support law in this case because you can't make a side deal regarding child support and it be enforceable. Side deals are not enforceable, only an agreement where the court signs off on it is enforceable. Everything else is non-enforceable. But in this case, we're not talking about child support. <laughs> we're talking about daycare that you promised to pay for, and she's been doing the daycare, so we're gonna give her her daycare money. All right. And night care, what have you been doing? Daycare, <laughs> afternoon care, evening care, and night care. Let's knock that up, 2,800 ain't enough for all that. <laughs> Weekend care. Right. Well, I'll give him a break. 2800 is a judgment because he agreed that he was to pay that money in child care services that you have provided for his child. All right? Good yeah. enough. That yeah. works out. Don't be mad. You should be happy. <laughs> bye bye. I'm pretty happy with uh, everything that went down. <laughs>